Ever wondered how to crack Google's mind-bending interview questions? Today, we're diving deep into the 12 men on an island mystery. It's not just about finding the odd man out, but also whether they're heavier or lighter. And you've got only three chances to figure it out. We're talking logic, symmetry, and an optimized approach that even Google would appreciate. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll be one step closer to acing that Google interview. Let's unravel this brain-twisting puzzle, shall we? Twelve guys are stuck on an island. Eleven of them weigh the same. But there's one sneaky fella who's either heavier or lighter. They've got this seesaw, but here's the kicker. They can only use it three times. So, they've got to figure out who's the odd one out and if it's bulkier or lighter. Take a moment and mull it over. Okay, let's tackle this step by step. Imagine these men as circles. We'll split them into three groups of four and compare the first group with the second. Two things can happen. Either they balance or they don't. To keep track, let's use colors. If they balance, they're all good. So, we'll mark them in green. The ones left out might be our odd man. So, let's highlight them with a yellow circle. In situation number two, when the groups don't balance, if the person seems lighter, paint him a little red. And if the person seems heavier, use dark red. In the beginning, it doesn't matter which side the weight moves. Just stick to the colors for the heavier and lighter folks. As the doubtful person is on the seesaw, we can use green for the men outside as they're the regular ones. After the first round, we've got two possible situations to think about. For the second round, how many of those yellow guys do we pick? We need to stick somewhere in the middle. So, we've got to go for the next number up from half, which is 3 in our case. Where should we put these three suspects? There are only two sensible options, and you need to balance them with three regular men. Both ways work great, but I'll go with the second one. Then, there are three things that could happen. They can balance, shift to the left, or shift to the right. If they balance, it means the odd man is not on the seesaw. So we mark the guys on the seesaw as green. Next, just weigh the odd man against any regular guy in the third go, and you'll find out if the odd man is lighter or heavier. Now, let's figure out the second situation. It means that either the person on the right is not as heavy, or one of the people on the left is a bit heavier. Let's use the colors to show this, and then weigh the two heavier people on the third try. If the scale stays even, it means both of them are regular folks, and the lighter person is the one we're looking for. He's probably lighter. If the scale tips, then the side that goes down has the person we're after, and he's heavier. This third situation is completely different from the last one. We've got two lighter people on the left and one heavier person on the right. Weigh the two lighter people this time. If the scale stays even, it means they're both regular weight, and the heavier person is the one we're interested in. He is heavier. If the scale tips, then the side that goes up has our person, and he's lighter. So, that case is sorted out now. Moving on to case 2. This is where the two groups don't balance during the full swing, and we're dealing with a total of 8 suspects. Let's aim for around 5 for the second round. Now, which five suspects should we go for? We can choose any five since we'll always have at least one of each type. I'll go with four heavier and one lighter. But here's the catch. How do we position them for the final round? We can have three potential outcomes in this round, each pinpointing one suspect. This setup allows us to unravel the problem effectively. In the final round, we can have a maximum of three suspects so we should make sure not to exceed that number by the end of the second round. Otherwise, we might end up with four suspects complicating the process. Using this rule, we can come up with a valid combination for placing the suspects. Let's arrange them as illustrated. Now, we have three potential subcases: Balance, shift left, or shift right. If they balance, then the odd man must be one of the three lighter suspects outside. So, during the third round, we match two of them against each other. If they balance, they're off normal weight, and the remaining outsider is the odd man and he's lighter. If they don't balance, then the side that rises has the odd man, who's also lighter. Subcase 2B. Here, the left side goes down while the right side goes up. 
That tells us that outsiders are normal. Check out the right side. The heavier suspects are going upward, so none of them is the odd man. They're all of normal weight. Similarly, on the left side, a lighter suspect is going down, confirming is not the odd man but also of normal weight. Plus, we've got two heavier suspects on the left that go down, so they're still the heavier suspects. The final weighing will reveal which of these two heavier suspects is actually the odd man. For the final subcase, two heavier suspects on the left are going up. That indicates they're of normal weight. We're left with one lighter suspect going up and two heavier suspects going down. Conduct the final weighing with the two heavier suspects. If they balance, then the lighter suspect is the odd man, making him lighter. If they don't balance, whichever side goes down holds the odd man, making him heavier. Case 2 is now completely resolved. While your efforts are commendable, there's a twist. This approach might not meet Google's expectations. What if Google challenges you with a puzzle involving 100 men, and you need to determine the minimum number of weighings required to identify the odd man? It's complex because there are numerous possible combinations to consider. To up the ante, could you solve it for 10,000 men? The logical approach I discussed still holds for a large number of objects, but it would take hours, if not days, to work through all the combinations. Think about it from Google's point of view. They're seeking a dynamic approach, meaning your solution needs to be highly efficient and capable of quickly handling any number of objects during runtime. First, let me show you the optimized answer so you can really grasp the difference between the two methods. After that, I'll explain how we got to this solution. Let's assign numbers to all the men. I'll conduct three separate weighings in this manner. Remember, these weighings are independent of the results of the previous ones. On the left, you'll see a table displaying all the possible outcomes of the weighings. Let's test it out with a couple of examples. Imagine person 7 is the odd man and he's heavier. The weighing results would be in W1, the weight shifts to the right. In W2, the weight shifts to the left. And in W3, both sides are balanced. So, if you check the table for the combination ARL equal, it should point to the correct odd man. As you can see here, person 7 is the odd man, and the letter H indicates he's heavier. Here's another scenario. Let's say the odd man is number 11 and he's lighter. In W1, he's outside, so the seesaw is balanced. In W2, he's on the right and lighter, so the weight shifts to the left. In W3, the weight shifts to the right. So if you check the combination, LLAR in the table, it should point to the correct odd man. As you can see here, person 11 is the odd man and the letter L indicates he is lighter. Our solution perfectly identifies the odd man and whether he's heavier or lighter based on the outcomes of the three weighings. Let's now logically understand how we arrive at this solution. A weighing has three potential outcomes. It can shift to the left, stay in the middle or balanced, or shift to the right. The balanced or equal sign indicates the odd man is not on the seesaw. He is standing outside. Now, let's delve into how we constructed a table. When there's just one weighing, it can give us three different results, which we can also find out mathematically as 3 to the power of 1. Now, if we have two weighings, for every value we get in the first weighing, there are three possible results in the second weighing, making a total of nine different combinations. Similarly with three weighings, for each value in the first weighing, we get a set of 9 outcomes for all the next weighings, giving us a total of 27 combinations. Take a look at the neat pattern in the table. The lower half is precisely opposite or the inverse of the upper half. For instance, LLL is the opposite of ARARAR. Similarly, LL equal is the opposite of ARARAR equal. Now, if we have the combination, E, 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 E equal. It means the odd man wasn't chosen in any of the three weighings. He remained outside throughout, making it impossible to tell if he was heavier or lighter. That's why we need to include all men at least for one weighing. So we can rule out the possibility of T, E, E, E equal. With 26 possible combinations left, we have 12 men and 24 potential suspicious instances like one being heavier, one lighter, two heavier, two lighter, 
all the way up to 12 being heavier and 12 being lighter. We can assign each combination to a suspicious instance, ensuring that if a particular combination of weighing occurs, we can identify the odd man and whether he's heavier or lighter. Let's figure out how to arrange them in a step-by-step -step way. Remember two simple rules. First, if you link a pattern to the heavier side, match the opposite to the lighter side for the same person, and vice versa. Second, suppose a person is suspected to be either heavier or lighter. In that case, the number of L's connected to the heavier side should be equal to the number of L's connected to the lighter side. The same goes for ARs, making the total number even. Now, the arrangement is pretty simple. We have 24 questionable instances and 26 possible combinations, and we only need 24. So, we discard two combinations that follow the rules we mentioned. Remove combinations LLL and its opposite ARARAR. Now, let's start by assigning numbers. We'll assign numbers from 1 to 12 and then assign the same numbers to their opposites. Make sure the L numbers on the heavier and lighter sides match. Then, take care of the remaining L's and R's accordingly. Now, let's focus on the second column. We have 5 L's and 2 are assigned to the heavier side. Add 2 L's to the heavier side, making sure to choose 1 L from the middle and 1 from the end. Then, assign the remaining L's to the lighter side. Check the numbers 9, 10, and 11 and their opposites, adjusting them accordingly. Also, do the same for numbers 4, 6, 7, and 8. When placing the men on the seesaw, gather the heavier ones together and the lighter ones together. For each trial, place all the heavier ones if the outcome suggests a heavier side, and vice versa. Check the table for guidance. For example, in the first trial, place men 1, 2, 6, and 8 on the left, and 3, 4, 5, and 7 on the right leaving the remaining ones aside. Repeat this for the other trials, following the patterns in the columns. To confirm our process, let's take a random outcome from the three trials. If we find L equal R in the table, the odd man is number 5 and he's lighter. We'll mark him accordingly on the seesaw. This solution perfectly identifies the odd man, just as Google would expect. You can apply this approach to a larger group, like 100 men. Simply adjust the numbers accordingly and follow the same logic. Now, here's a brain teaser for you all. How would you approach this puzzle if there were 100 men on that island? What's your strategy for identifying the odd man with the fewest possible weighings? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow problem solvers. And if you want more logical puzzles and riddles, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for our weekly brain teasers. Get ready to ace those interviews with your newfound logical prowess. Until next time, stay curious and keep those problem-solving skills sharp for your next interview.